Hello YouTube, Reseller Mom here. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is about pesticide training with Amazon FBA. Today is April 15th, 2019. And as most of you who are ungated in whatever category pesticides fell under, you received an email saying that you had ASINs that are um, falling under this category and you need to take this training and get re-ungated for those items if you want to continue selling them. So that's what today's video is about. Let's get started. So Amazon's emails are pretty cut and dry, in my opinion. You need to read them and then analyze them and see what they mean for you. Now this was pretty simple. It gave you a list of the ASINs affected it said that you will need to apply to re-ungate for them possibly, and that you need to complete this pesticide training by June 7th, or you will not be able to sell pesticides um, with your account, and you need to pass some interactive questions with an 80% or better. Okay, so I've got some facts there. Now, history tells me with Amazon and their categories, when they lock them down, they lock them down, and it's pretty hard to go through the process after the fact. So they did this with DVDs, they did it with health, and they did it with beauty and grocery. And I know people who didn't get in when they were auto ungate or pretty close to auto ungate. It's very difficult to get ungated for that. So history tells me that I don't want to have this fall off my radar. The other thing that I want to ask myself is what kind of products do I sell and what does this mean for my business in terms of cash and flow and uh, you know, making a profit. And the big sellers I have in the pesticide category are like fly traps and mosquito traps and stuff. So it is something that I want to be able to sell. It's something I come across uh, doing retail arbitrage all the time. So I definitely don't want to shut that door on them. Would I be a serious hurt? No, but I don't want to if I don't have to. This seems pretty easy to complete the module and, you know, keep that door open, then say, let it fall off the radar and try again in September. That might not work. I may not be able to get back in it. That's something that Amazon doesn't tell you. They don't tell you what the process is going to be after the fact. They just say, hey, if you want to keep selling pesticides, you got to do this by June 7th. And that's it. That's all they tell you. Okay. In the email, there was no link directly to the training. So I went to Amazon Seller Central, clicked uh, on the search bar and typed in pesticide training, and it brought up the module right away. It goes through in the very beginning the what you need to do to pass it. It's like a four-step module. You need to get an 80% or better. If you miss things, they will re-question you a certain amount of times. So pretty cut and dry there. I am on module one. I just got through module one. I have passed, There was one question. It was easy to answer. I went ahead and answered that. And I'm going to complete the rest of the module, finish up this video, and let you know what I find out. But so far, pretty easy peasy. But it is something that did have to flag on my radar, and I scheduled it in for this Monday morning to get done while I'm peeling tags off my Kohl's fines and packing up my um, arbitrage fines from this weekend. So not too difficult, but definitely something you don't want to pass up. And Amazon's like that. If you don't pay attention to your things, you can really, really get hurt. Uh, we also received an email, was it last week? might have been last week or the beginning or the end of the week before on meltables and you cannot send in things that are meltables between what is it May 1st and October 1st or September 1st the email says it but basically the summer months and that stems from a problem that UPS and uh, not UPS yeah UPS had with summer and the trucks and the chocolates and stuff it used to not be that way it used to be you could send in meltables all year round but what was happening was customers were getting a bag of M&Ms that was completely melted and getting really pissed off. And so then there was a change in how they do their business. And that's always happening. Every year there's something different, something different going on. Anyhow, uh, what, is that, what did that mean for my business is you can't sell multiples during the summer. You've got to get your Easter in really quick. And uh, it also affects vitamins and gummies, gummy vitamins. So anything that's like a gelatin base can be affected by that as well. So, you know, you got to look at these emails and then see how does it affect your business? Because at first glance, you may say, oh, well, chocolates doesn't affect me. And then you're going, oh, shoot, no, I have a lot of gummy vitamins that I sell. And now I can't sell those during the summer. Same with these pesticides. You know, at first I go, oh, I'm not a big pesticide seller. And then I looked at the ASINs and I went, oh, fly traps are pesticides. 
you know, just sticky fly traps. I didn't think they were in, you know, at first initial glance, but it makes sense now. So anyhow, let's get uh, going here. I will give you a follow up when I'm done with the training on how it went. I am done and completed and I can now sell my pesticides again. So a couple of things. You need an 80% or better. It was actually eight modules, not four. If I said four earlier, uh, it's actually eight. You can miss about four questions in my estimation. I didn't miss that many, but I think that's what you could in order to get an 80%. If you miss a question once, you're allowed another retry. You can also rewatch the video and then retry the question, which I recommend doing. Uh, if you miss a question twice though, then wah, wah, it goes against your score. Now, this is where it was getting difficult. At the end, it says, congratulations, you've completed this course. You can hit the exit course button to get credit for the course. And when I pressed that, nothing happened. So wound up clicking a whole bunch of buttons, not getting anywhere, and then it reset it to zero on my course. So I wound up having to go through and re-answer all the questions again, and then got to that same page and wound up having to call Amazon and tell them, hey, this isn't going through. Did I get credit for the course or not? You definitely want to verify if something technical like that happens because the last thing I want to do is go through this whole course thing and then find out that I didn't really do it or get credit for it. So anyhow, spoke to Amazon. They wound up requiring an ASIN that was affected, one of my affected ASINs, and a screenshot of the course, you know, saying that I completed the course. So to do my screenshots for, Ace, for Amazon, they've required them every once in a while for various reasons. Uh, I hit the print screen on my screen. I open up a Word document. I copy, you know, paste that print screen in there. And then I crop it to just what they need because they don't need, I have dual screens, so they don't need to see my other screen. They don't need to see my tabs open and all that good stuff. Who knows what they're going to look at? I don't know. I just don't, I figure they don't need to look at it. And then in Word, if you copy that print screen and paste it, the first option, you just get a same verbatim of the, the dual screen and, and everything. But if you paste it as a picture, you'll get just the cropped image. And then if you right click that, you can save that image as a PNG or a JPEG. Now, Amazon usually prefers JPEGs or that's what I, I usually send them. So I just uh, right click, saved it as a JPEG, had to attach it to the case. Um, which is pretty easy peasy, but you know, the first time I had to do it, it was a little bit of a walkthrough for me. Anyhow, so sent him a screenshot saying I completed the course, sent him one of the ASINs from the email. They listed out, I think I had five ASINs affected. And then he said to double check that in your account to see if you've passed, you can just take that ASIN, hit it into the add a product. And if it says you can sell it, then that means you've completed the course and everything. Anyhow, what's good though, is that I have this now on all documentation. He sent me an email of a case just verbatim saying what, what I just told you. So now I have that in case, uh, you know, if there's any other snafu going on, I can say, well, you know, we created case, da, da, da. Here's some ID and some, uh, you know, documentation about it. Anyhow, learning the course, I think it's, it was very informative. I, I was highly surprised. Usually I'm not very motivated to pay attention to these courses, but uh, I, I would have to say this was very well done, put together, informative, straight to the point, etc. on the U.S. regulations for selling pesticides. I think it's very important to know these for both Amazon and eBay, because if you are selling this stuff on eBay, which sometimes we do, if you're restricted on Amazon, you know, just flop it over to Mercari or Poshmark, well, not, not Poshmark for pesticides, but uh, eBay, you know what I mean. But it's very good to know that as a seller, if you sell any of this stuff online, you can then become liable for regulatory issues or customer issues, um, things like that. So very important. Now, if you are importing stuff from China, you know that you need to pay attention a little bit more. There's definitely some regulations on repackaging that was inf very informative. So if you get like say a 12 case of pesticides and it's meant to be sold as a 12 pack, you cannot repackage that. So that was very good to know. Uh, some other things that were kind of caught my mind is like, say you have cutting boards that say they're antibacterial that could fall under the regulations. So sometimes, you know, you may not think you're selling pesticides, but actually if it makes pesticidal claims, it could fall under that. So I highly recommend that even if you don't plan on going into pesticides, this is some knowledge base that you want to carve out a little bit of your time and go ahead and do. So that is done and complete. There were some other modules that caught my eye. So for the rest of the day, I'm going to be 
just kind of having those go in the background. And I can now say it's completed and I can look out for pesticides. Uh, some of my favorite, again, are like mosquito wipes, which I use and I sell, fly traps, rodent traps, um, rat traps, things like that. So it's good to know the difference between um, just having a, like a mechanical trap and then having it with pesticides in it as well and the regulations that go along with that. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it motivates you to get that done. Again, the cutoff is June 7th, so this is kind of very uh, time specific. It's now April of 2019. Um, and if you were thinking about doing that or kind of on the cusp, I encourage you to go do that. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day. Leave me a thumbs up if you like these types of things and take care.